Hello, very good morning to all. Welcome to today's Daily Dose of Market Insights by Oenda. I'm Kelvin Wong here, the Senior Market Analyst of Oenda Asia Pacific. So before we start our Daily Dose for today, today will be Tuesday, the 19th of March 2024. Let's take a look at the disclaimer slides first. All right, leverage trading carries a high degree of risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Losses can exit deposits. This presentation is not an offer or solicitation to buy or sell, no financial advice or recommendation for any investment product, as well as any forecast prediction or projection in this presentation is not necessarily indicative of the future or likely performance of the product. This advertisement has not been reviewed by the monitored total Authority, authority of Singapore. All right, so before we jump straight into the short term technical outlook, uh, today will be a very kind of potentially volatile day. Why? Because while we are speaking to you right now, uh, we are actually now uh, coming to actually have two central major central bank meeting in Asia. RBA, the Royal Bank of Australia, that should then be a big surprise. Uh, interest rate is more or less expected to be unchanged at this uh, 4.35%, so that's actually a 12-year high, given the fact that RBA is still pretty much concerned about uh, external inflation, uh, elevated inflation that may be spreading over to Australia. And also RBA is very likely to actually only take the lead from the Fed, which is uh, going to conclude their meeting tomorrow instead, that means Singapore early Singapore time in, on Thursday, where very much likely that the Fed will also stamp at 5.25% to 5.5%. And most importantly, the big change may come from Bank of Japan today. So later I'll tell you why, because we know that for those who actually follow our daily dose of market insights, we have been highlighting uh, there's actually positive fundamental news out from Japan that supports the need for BOJ to actually normalize their ultra dovish interest rate policy imminent and fast. All right. So one of the latest fund positive fundamental news or data that's out from Japan was last week preliminary results from uh, Rango. Uh, Rango is actually the late, the largest labor union federation in Japan. They actually reported they managed to secure a 5.3 5, 5.3 5.3% uh, which increase, that's actually the average annualized wage increase for this financial year. So that's actually the largest uh, wage uh, hike that is going to be uh, enacted in Japan in the last, uh, since 1991. So that's actually a big positive push for Japan to actually manage to sustain the uh, con uh, consumer-led uh, uh, de de demand, uh, I'll say that demand pool-led inflation at sustainably at above the 2% BOJ uh, target that BOJ desired before thinking about normalizing their ultra dovish monetary policy. So uh, before we start, then also I'll share with you what happened overnight in the US market as well. So before we jump straight to BOJ, let us start what happened in overnight first. So in overnight, right, uh, yesterday the US session managed to recover, uh, recovered. Uh, but let's share with you what happened in the US market. So what we could see over here is this, So over here, this is what happened overnight in the US uh, heat map on the S&P 500. So you see a big uh, against in the mega cap seven stocks. All right. So those who in the US market, mega cap, the seven magnificent mega cap stocks shouldn't be too foreign to you. So that's actually uh, the biggest weightage component stock in the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100 uh, driven by technology and AI template like NVIDIA. Microsoft, then you have Apple, and Google, Meta, Amazon, and Tesla. So even Tesla recovered as well. So what you could see over here is that yesterday's recovery on in the US market is driven by Google and Apple, right? Especially Google is up 4.44%. So the reason why they're actually up because uh, ahead of this uh, news flow that has taken shape ahead of the opening of the US session yesterday, that's 9.30 p.m. Singapore time. So during the European session yesterday, somewhere around 3 p.m. Singapore time to 4 p.m. Singapore time, there's this positive news flow out uh, stating that Apple is in talks to let Google Gemini power iPhone AI features. So as you know that Apple itself is the laggard within the Nasdaq 100. So in fact, 
Apple is actually down year to date. It's still negative year to date, uh, uh, because they actually deem Apple now is like within the seven mega cap magnificent magnificent technology related stock. Uh, don't talk about Tesla. Google Apple is the one that is kind of a old school right now because uh, they do not it does not embrace AI. Okay, uh, so they are more like an old school consumer electronics. So given the fact that everyone seems to be jumping on this AI bandwagon, so anything that's AI related will actually give a boost to the market. But actually, uh, if you look at it from a perspective, it seems to me that it's getting very, very much over concentrated. And what's interesting over here is, uh, yes, we do see uh, across the board rally. All right, on the on the major U.S. stock market, uh, the SPX up 0.63 percent, the Nasdaq up uh, 1 percent, the Dow Jones Industrial up 0.2 percent. But however, the Russell 2000 refused to rally, negative 0.72 percent. All right. So later, I'll share with you the chart, especially on the Nasdaq 100. Why? Because Nasdaq 100 is among the major uh, U.S. stock indices. They are actually the leader. So any weakness on the leader could actually uh, prevent any further uh, uptick on the rest of the index. All right. Oh, that's a big risk over here. And the fact that Nasdaq 100 uh, yesterday, it actually sold off during the U.S. session. That means it cut off a certain portion of yesterday's rally and it closed down below the psychological level of 18,000. Uh, and technically, it's still below the 20 day moving average. All right. Despite yesterday initial push up. All right. So that is the situation on the U.S. stock market. AI driven optimism news again. So now uh, let me share with you what uh, what's going to take place in that BOJ over here. So BOJ, right, instead of uh, the, the release of today's, uh, we call it announcement, there's a lot of local press in Japan. Uh, the Nikkei is the most famous, famous uh, for those who actually follow local Japanese press because Nikkei, uh, uh, the, the Nikkei is actually is more, is a, is the Nikkei Asia is Japan, but they have an English publication that is widely internationally followed. All right. So what they actually released over here, right? This, this, this release, right, was 200 uh, GST. So, so it's actually 2 a.m. yesterday, 2 a.m. Singapore time, okay? Or 1 a.m. Singapore time, this is Japan time. So they actually released this report saying that the BOJ is to end year curve control ETF purchases today, all right? So there's a lot of front loading of uh, news from local press, uh, with the Nikkei 25 being the late, with the Nikkei X Asia being the latest, stating that BOJ this time around will be much more bowlful because if you look at the previous BOJ meeting, they are much more you know hesitant when they will start to normalize their ultra dovish policy. That means every time they will say that oh, hey, uh, there's not enough evidence for us to remove that ultra uh, a commodity policy like negative short-term interest rate we may keep going to buy uh jgb to actually maintain that 10-year jgb below that one percent level but however given the fact that the last few days and even the this latest uh news flow up from the nikkei asia is pointing towards a much more bowful and hawkish boj going forward today but however market doesn't seem to be uh, pricing in this potential hawkish BOJ because it seems to us that uh, market doesn't believe that it may happen. Why? Because if you look at this uh, JGB yield, this is not JGB yield, this is the JGB bond futures in prices. Uh, so if yield price, uh, JGB yield push up, the bond price will come down. All right. So if you look at the JGB VIX volatility, as you see my screen over here, it's still rather lower, subdued at 4.10 level, despite that more hawkish local press news flow that advocate a potential more hawkish BOJ today. So it's still hovering at the level in the last three months, all right, below the last three months level. And what's interesting over here is it's still uh, kind of uh, 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 during the 31st of October, prior to, at this point in time, 31st of October. So 31st of October is where the BOJ last modified its year curve control program. So on the last meeting in 31st of October, BOJ actually removed the 1% upper limit hard cap. That means it keep it at a reference level. So this time around, the local press saying that even this 1% reference level will be totally be removed as well. All right, that means a total scrap of the YCC, but the market doesn't seem to be pricing in in this rather hawkish BOJ move because the 10-year JGB VIX still remains pretty much subdued 
level. And if you look at the FX market over here, uh, on the dollar yen, so dollar yen doesn't seem to be coming down as well. It's still hovering around the 20 day moving average, I think as a resistance. Despite yesterday, there's a short, uh, only about what, 20 pips down move, all right? So now let us take a look at uh, what's the calendar so far that has been, I think the data is not out yet for BOJ side of the story. Okay, not, it's not out yet, it's actually, uh, yeah, it's nothing's out yet. So uh, the Australia one will be at 11.30. So uh, meanwhile, let me uh, see, is there any news flow? So for those who want to follow uh, latest, uh, we call it kind of Forex related news, you can go to this one called Forex Live. Okay, they will tend to actually publish it faster. Yeah, no, nothing. Okay, so uh, the BOJ and it's not out yet because BOJ, uh, you know, that, that monetary policy meeting is not fixed, uh, even though it's stayed at 11 a.m. Singapore time, but it doesn't mean that it will release exactly at 11 a.m. It could be slightly later, but for RBA, it's fixed, uh, it's 11.30, okay? We should actually take a look after that, hopefully uh, after a while, in a while of time. So meanwhile, right, uh, now that is the kind of uh, news flow that we have uh, so far uh, that I want to share with you all. So let us now straight jump into the short-term uh, technicals. Uh. All right, so for the short-term technical over here, let's take a look at the intermarket correlation first. All right. Okay, so what we see over here is that the FX market, let's go to the FX market, okay? So the FX market, right, the broad-based dollar index, okay, continue to remain kept below the first uh, intermediate resistance at this 103.70 level, okay? We're also playing around with the 20-day, the 50-day, and the 200-day moving average. All these three moving average, I think, as a similar graphical resistance level at 103.70. So what we could see, uh, yes, we may see uh, the last one, two, three, three days of dollar strength push up. But this dollar strand push up still remains kept below a key near term uh, resistance at 103.70. So with that, right, what it means that certain uh, like the euro dollar, the sterling dollar all remains on support level right now because this is the dollar index, right? So and also this this dollar index being resistance at this 103.70 level also implies that the 10 year treasury yield is also at some key near term resistance as well which is the 4.33% resistance level, okay? So this is the previous minus, the previous medium term swing high of 22nd of February, where that previous, uh, we call it minus, so off took shape, okay? Now, what we have over here, let us start with the Euro dollar. So let me uh, expand my screen so that you guys could actually see me, see the screen instead of me, all right? Okay, so the euro dollar going to actually play around this 20 day moving average and also the 10870 short term pivotal support. So now it's actually bouncing up from this level. And what's interesting over here is that the RSI going to shape positive element, higher low, okay, higher low uh, after hitting the extreme oversold level last week. Okay, so all in all, right, what we see over here is uh, this positive uh, so-called observation in the hourly RSI actually indicate to us this um, downside momentum, the downside momentum that was seen on last Friday seems to be abated. All right, so with that, uh, we'll still maintain that uh, short-term bullish bias for a potential short-term recovery scenario to take shape on the euro dollar. At least in the first step, uh, first resistance level to watch will be at 1.0910. Above it exposes the uh, 8th of March minus swing high area at 1.0970. Only an hourly close below 1.0870 will invalidate this short term recovery uh, scenario bias to actually expose the next near term support level at 1.084, which confluence with the 200 day moving average. Below it exposes 1.08 figure level, which confluence with the minor swing low of 28th of September, 28th of February, uh, 1st of March, and yeah, 1st of March, 1st of March and 28th of February. Okay, very similar for the sterling dollar as well. So sterling dollar going to actually bounce off right at the 20 day moving average in today's Asia session, which is also above this former minor range 
resistance now turns into a pullback support where we have our 127 figure short term pivotal support to maintain that short term potential recovery scenario and also the RSI continue to shape very similar observation like the euro dollar higher low that's being formed all right after hitting the oversold region on last Friday so indicating to us that last Friday's uh, push now in terms of the downside momentum has a bit as well. So uh, first resistance to watch will be at 1.2660. Above it exposes uh, last Thursday minus swing high area that's confluence with the previous Tuesday minus swing high area acting as a resistance at 1.2820. Only hourly close below 127 figure level will invalidate the short term recovery uh, scenario basis or bias to expose the next near term support level at 12670. A breakdown below it exposes the psychological level of 126 figure level, which confluence with the minor swing low of 21st of February, 1st of March, and as well as the 200 day moving average. Okay. Now, uh, back to the Asia Pacific currency. So let's look at the dollar yen. So dollar yen, right, the key resistance, no change, would be at the 20 day moving average, uh, that uh, 14950 level. So this 14950 level is back confluence with the former minor swing low that was tested one time, two time, in on 1st of March and 15th of February before that a uh, minor steep sell off took shape. All right, over here, a breakdown below this 14950 triggered this steep minor steep sell off on the dollar yet. So definitely for sure, this is a very important uh, sentiment or tech psychological level, we call it in technical analysis speaking, and also confluence with the 20 day moving average. All right, the RSI continue to remains on resistance after that bearish divergence that was flashed out yesterday. So for sure, uh, 14950 is a short term pivotal key resistance level to maintain this potential short term bearish bias on the dollar yen. First support level to watch will be at 14880 slash 60, which confluence with the 50 day moving average. A break below 14860 exposes the next near term support level at 14795, which confluence with the minor swing high area of 12 of March uh, to 14 of March, as well, as well as close to the lower limit of this minor ascending channel that I drew from the low of 11 of March. Hourly close above 14950, invalidate the short term bearish bias to see a squeeze up towards 150, 15, 15. above it uh, exposed the lower limit of this min major resistance level at 150.65 slash 150.85. All right, very interestingly, uh, ahead of the Aussie dollar, uh, the Aussie dollar also managed to survive uh, despite this early morning push down and managed to actually uh, shape to bullish hourly candle uh, at the 65.50 level. So this is a bit of whipsaw here. And also what we could see over here is that the RSI also managed to shape that positive, uh, we call it uh, the positive uh, occurrence uh, that that was actually uh, have a similar price action behavior that I show you on the hourly RSI of the euro dollar and the sterling dollar a while ago. Higher low after hitting a extreme oversold level on last Friday. So indicating to us that uh, this morning a sell off in terms of the downside momentum is more like a fake push down instead. So no change 65.50 as a short term pivotal support maintain that short term recovery bias scenario on the Aussie dollar ahead of the RBA um, we call it a monetary policy outcome, which is shouldn't be a big surprise to the market. Uh, 65, uh, 70 will be the first resistance level to watch. So that was yesterday's uh, swing high area that refused to break. We saw confluence with last Friday's swing high area during the US session as well. So first resistance 65, 70 above it exposes the next resistance level at the 66 figure level, which is this Cree graphical uh, former graphicals uh, minor support level breakdown turns into a pullback resistance. Only hourly, uh, only and clear hourly close below 65.50 later will invalidate this short term recovery bias scenario. <coughs> Excuse me, to expose the next uh, near term support level at 65.20s, uh, followed by 64.90, which is the swing low area of 29 of February to 6 of March over here. All right. So net net overall, we do still see a uh, dollar uh, strength that is being kept at this juncture. After I share with you the short term technical elements of the various major dollar FX pairs. Now FX done. Let us take a look at the um, major stock indices. All right, major stock indices will be a bit complex right now. Let us start with the Hong Kong 33 first, the Hansen Index. So Hansen they have continued to survive this morning after. At the start of today's Asia session, 
that earlier sell off, but the sell off managed to form an hourly uh, bullish candlestick, hammer candlestick, right at the short term pivotal support that we highlighted yesterday, 16,480, and also the 20 day moving average as well, where it managed to survive again. So, for sure, this level is pretty much key why it confluences with three different elements all pointing to the same pivotal support level. 16,480, why is it? 20 day moving average lower limit of this minor ascending channel that I drew from 22nd of January and as well as if you do the FIBO retracement from that previous push up over here, the last push up from 5th of March all the way up to the last swing high of 13th of March, it confluence with the golden ratio at 61.8%, all right, over here. So definitely for sure this is a clear 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 inflection level that in order for the bulls to survive it must hold this level all right so no change 16,480 short term pivotal support since this level is not being taken out we will still maintain that short term uh, bullish outlook first resistance you got to break through will be 16,890 for sure then thereafter exposes the minor swing high area of 13th of March at 17,230 Hourly close below 16,480, invalidate this short term bullish bias to expose the 50 day moving average. Now, conferencing at the support level at 16,135, a break below it exposes 15,735 level, which is the minor swing low of 15th of March, 15th of February. Pardon me. Okay, so that's for the Hong Kong 33, Nikkei 225. So, Nikkei 225, uh, yesterday it managed to uh, squeeze up. But what is squeezed out over here? Yesterday we were neutral due to mixed element, but it managed to, uh, to have that kind of bearish reaction, the binary bearish reaction of this uh, level here, which is uh, this zone here, I would say, which is the former ascending channel support from 8th of Jan 20,024 low, and also confluence with this uh, 61. Okay, so that's a FIBO retracement as well. If I do from the last push down, okay, it's also confluence with the golden ratio as well at the 61.8%. Okay, very close. So what I do is that I will use uh, it's a slight, uh, we call it whipsaw here. There's a zone now 39,600, 39,840, using that as a yesterday's, uh, this, that is yesterday's Asia session high. Okay, so 39,840, short term pivotal resistance that I have for today. Potentially that could be uh, some sign of a bearish setback. Okay, on the Nikkei 225 or the Japan 225, first support level to watch will be at 39,210, followed by 38,960, this level over here. Okay, only and which is the congestion area, the graphical congestion area, an hourly close above 39,840 will invalidate this uh, short term bearish setback scenario on the Japan 225 to potentially see a squeeze up to retest the current all time high area at 40,490 slash 40,690. Okay, then what we have for the German DAX. So German 30 continue to hold above this 17,900 short term, Titan short term pivotal support that we have yesterday. We also confluence with the lower limit of this minor ascending channel that I drew from the low of 14th of February. So no change, uh, still maintain this as a short term pivotal support level to maintain that short term bullish bias on the German 30. First resistance to watch 18,100 followed by 18,190. Only an hourly close below 17,900 will invalidate this short term bullish bias to expose the 17,790 next support level, followed by 17,640, which is a uh, confluence with the this two zone here, this support zone, next support zone actually confluence with the rising upward stopping 20 day moving average, and as well as the minor swing low area of 5th of March to 11th of March. All right. So now very complex is the NASDAQ. So let's look at the NASDAQ chart. So NASDAQ over here, despite yesterday's uh, rally, it actually failed to recapture the 20 day moving average. All right. So that rally, like I mentioned earlier on, is actually driven by what you see over here is actually driven by that AI optimism news flow up from the tie up between uh, Apple and Google. All right. And what's interesting here, the RSI managed to remain bearish, all right, after the breakdown of this former ascending, parallel ascending trendline support and continue to shape a lower high, okay? And what's interesting over here, prior to this bearish breakdown, it formed a very clear bearish divergence. So, it came to us that this few days of movement, there's no clear upside 
medium term upside momentum coming into the higher time frame picture, which is a daily chart over here. So if you look at the so-called the, the hourly chart where we have as a day, we do have a resistance level at 18,110. There's no clear breakout of this level at 18,111. Zero. That was the short-term pivotal uh, resistance that we have. So bear in mind that uh, we do expect a bit of a push, push, push back, uh, a bit of a kind of a bounce because the RSI at the end of Friday session it hit the oversold level. So the bounce take shape and then surpass clearly the eighteen thousand one one zero level before selling off. Uh, at the end of the US, at the second half of the US session yesterday and back below the 20-day moving average, all right? So bear in mind, this is a trading view where I could overlay a higher time frame technical element like this 20-day moving average on the hourly chart. We are able to do that. So no change, 18,110 short-term pivotal resistance level since there's no clear breakthrough at this level. Maintain that bearish bias on the Nasdaq 100. First support level to watch, 17,810 followed by 17,650, which confluence with the 50-day moving average. I think it's a support level as well. A clear breakout above 18,110 will invalidate the short-term bearish bias to see a potential squeeze up to retest the current all-time high area at this 18,035. A breakout above it exposes the next near-term support level, near-term resistance level, which is uh, being defined by a cluster of feedback extension level at 18,435 slash 18,470. Uh, no change on the Dow Jones industrial average, still maintain that neutrality bias between these two range at 39,100 slash 38,660. So overall, uh, I would say it's more of like a mixed back picture in terms of trend bias for the major stock indices that I shared with you earlier on. Now, let us take a look at WTI crude. So WTI crude over here uh, is getting very, very bullish. So this is a daily chart on West Texas oil. So for sure, we have a for those who actually follow our daily dose, we do have a clear trigger level at 78.40. So after a clear breakout of this 78.40, price action going to rally very steeply in the last one, two, three, and the four days. Okay, last three session. All right. And what's interesting over here right now is that the 20-day moving average now has already surpassed the 200-day moving average and also way above the 50-day moving average. So in the case to us, right, what we could see over here is could be a start of a medium term uptrend and in fact it could start to form a major basing formation that has taken shape in 20th of March last year among, around a month ago with a we call it a potential double bottom formation with the clear neckline resistance at 93.80 all right so this is more of long term why West Texas oil is important because West Texas oil has a clear implication towards future inflationary trend globally and in the US wide. Let me share with you this chart, which is very important to share with you. If you look at this three line over here, West Texas oil, WTI crude is in green. Then you have the orange and the blue line. This is what I call 10 year break even inflation in US and five year break even inflation in US. So why this break inflation? Break even inflation rate are considered as future expected inflation rate in US based on a tradable instrument called TIPS tips in short, if it's tradable in US. So what it means that uh, now 10 year break even is at 2.31% and the five year break even at 2.39%. That means 10 year from now, market is expecting US inflation to be at 2.31% and five year from now, market is, is expecting inflation to be at 2.39%, all right? But do not look at the absolute number, but look at the trend of this uh, break even inflation. It actually moved in line with WTI crude oil. That means if WTI crude oil continue to rise higher, this break even inflation was also going to push up higher as well. Like what we see earlier on, during over here before the onset of that Russia and Ukraine invasion in February, March of 2022. Notice over here. And because due to this steep push up over here in inflation expectation, this where on 14 of March 2022, the Fed started, it kickstart its interest rate hike cycle. Then on the 20, okay, over here, on August last year, it has so far paused its interest rate. Okay, it's in it's fat fund rate. So think about it. If this inflation expectation is going to pipe up higher and higher, uh, the Fed dovish pivot narrative that market has already highly anticipated since the start of this year, more or less will get reduced lesser and lesser. And that could actually put pressure on that US 10 year treasury yield as well. So net net, if this bunch of lines over here going to inch up higher, lead by the WTI crude oil prices, 
feeding into higher in future inflationary expectation in US, the Fed itself will be found very, very hard to have a very pronounced Fed dovish pivot, or perhaps they may only start to cut once. All right, that's it, a, a token cut due to potentially US presidential election this year, then thereafter they will stamp back throughout the rest of 2024. And that could actually put pressure on that US 10-year treasury to rise further. So a further rise in the US 10-year treasury will potentially put downside pressure on risk assets. So that's the intermarket correlation I share with you, the key takeaway. All right, so this is a long-term takeaway on the WTI potential impact on the Cross asset classes. Okay, so with that, what is the short term technical outlook for WTI crude oil? So back to the WTI crude oil uh, chart. So this is the daily chart. So if you go to the hourly chart where we formulate our short term technical outlook, so for sure the price action we remain bullish since last week, uh, since about one and a half week ago. First resistance, the, the resistance level we highlight will be 8320, almost hit already. So there's actually a clear breakout of 8165 level. So this was our previous first resistance, second resistance. So a clear breakout of the 8165 level, it broke out. So what we see over here is that the RSI, yes, it hit the overbought level before uh, exiting from the overbought level during the US session yesterday. But upon hitting the overbought level, it shows similar price action as the previous one. There's no bearish divergence. It's going to flash out higher high in line with the price action as well. So what you could see here, yes, there may be a bit of pullback to work out from the overbought condition, the shorter overbought condition yesterday, but the odds of shaping this bearish uh, near-term reversal back down to the 20-day moving average seems remote right now. So it's more like a minor corrective pullback instead because there's no bearish divergence that's being flashed out on the hourly RSI. So what I could do over here is that uh, I don't want to use uh, 8165 as my short-term pivotal support. It's a bit tight. Uh, that price action may just uh, whipsaw around this area. So I'll be using this level instead. Why? Because this is pretty much clear, tested one time, two time, three time, four time, previously minor range, breakout shape that U-shape, minor U-shape recovery before that rally take shape, before the current rally take shape. So 79.70 pretty clear is a clear key short-term pivotal support level to maintain this ongoing bullish bias on West Texas oil. First recent level to watch 83.20, above it exposes 84.90 level. Okay, so what's 84.90? If you go to the daily chart very clearly, this is the upper limit of the graphical zone over here. All right, and 84.90 also, if you do that FIBO retracement of that previous medium term decline from 20, September 2023 all the way down to December 2023 is the 61.8 FIBO retracement. Okay, so that's give rise for me of the 84.90 support resistance level after 83.20 is taken up. All right, only hourly close below 79.70 will invalidate the short term bullish outlook to see a steeper corrective pullback to retest the 20 day and a 200 day moving average acting as a support level at 78.80. A breakdown below this level exposes 77.40 next, okay, which confluence with the rising 50 day moving average as well. So that's sum up for WTI crude oil. Uh, lastly, will be gold spot. Okay, so gold spot continue to trace lower and it refused to break above this minor descending trend line from the all time high that I drew over here at, at this autumn high area at 21.95 okay that was made on two Fridays ago okay so no change using 21.80 as my short-term pivotal resistance for spot gold XAU slash USD for potentially for that minor corrective pullback to play out to 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 actually uh revert for that how some people some people say that that mean reversion decline to re revert back to the 20-day moving average I think as a support so support zone to watch will be at 21.25 slash 21.10 only hourly close above 2180 will invalidate this uh, minor corrective pullback scenario to just resume the impulsive up move. First resistance 2200 slash 2210, then followed by 2220 slash 2230. All right, so that's all I have for the short term technical outlook. So, meanwhile, let's take a look at the calendar. Has BOJ uh, announced yet? Okay, BOJ has announced. Uh, so, RBA no change, 4.35%. So, you look at the, the chart of the dollar of where is the chart of Aussie dollar? Okay, so Aussie dollar, okay, right now is coming to retest that 60, 65, 60 short term pivotal support again, uh, a breakdown. So let's see how it goes because it's hourly. So on the hourly over here, if we manage to survive at the 66.50 level, we could still maintain that short term bullish bias, big high bias, but it got to break up above 65.70 level, okay? Dollar yen, okay, a bit of movement. Okay, now it's trying to squeeze up uh, at 14950. 
So is there any news on the dollar yen over here? Okay, so it actually announces end of negative interest rate and scrap the year curve control. Okay, so that's the latest news here. So now uh, it's squeezing up. So let's see how it goes. Okay, right now it didn't have a clear breakout. Uh. Notice you see here, there's actually a sell off uh, coming place. So for sure, this 14950 short term pivotal resistance is a clear level to watch out for. All right, so that's pretty much sum up for today's uh, short term uh, daily dose of market insight. So before we go, other than RBA and the BOJ, what other news that we have important for today? So uh, what we have over here is some key European data. So we have Germany will be the economy economic sentiment uh, data for March out at 6 p.m. Singapore time. Then thereafter, we do have a Canada inflation rate that is out at 8.30 p.m. Singapore time. And during the U.S. session, it's pretty much quiet except for some housing stats data out at 8.30 p.m. Singapore time today. OK, so during the Asia session early in the morning, uh, before our daily dose, we do have China, other benchmark interest rate, the loan prime rate at one year and five years. So very likely, uh, given the fact that last week they didn't change the medium term MLF rate. So the loan prime rate for the one year and five year likely will to be remains unchanged as well at 3.45% and 3.95% when they release it at 9.15 a.m. Singapore time tomorrow. So with that, do have a great day ahead and we shall speak again tomorrow. Thank you.